I recently, I believe many of you have been heard of Midtown Modern, which will be the latest new launch condo in Bugis. And I believe this will be the very big hype, especially if you are looking for something which is the integrated development in CBD area, which is kind of very rare in today's market. Two weeks ago, I have done a video to introduce this new launch. And today, I'm going to add on the condo analysis and review for Midtown Modern. So this video will include the price analysis, the supply and demand, whether this condo is a right choice for an investment purpose, as well as for your own stay. I'm the property strategist, Stephen Chong. I appreciate your early thumbs up. Your likes and comments will be my motivation for me to do more quality videos. I would like to touch on the macro perspective whether is the District 7 is the right choice to go or not. If District 7 is not a good place for you to invest, I would say it will be a time waste to talk about Midtown Modern, right? Okay, for your information, Midtown Modern is located in the District 7. Okay, District 7 is part of the CBD and also the core central region of Singapore, CCR. And because the government has been promoting live, work and play in the same place. So we have seen quite a few of new launch in the CBD area. And which district is the most comparable to the District 7 is District 2 and 9. Okay, District 2 is Tanjong Baga, whereas District 9 is Orchard area. So all these three districts fulfill the live, work and play in the same place. So I would like to compare among these three districts. Okay, usually how I compare is to compare the resale price trend over the past few years, whether the district has been performing well or not. I only pick resale prices because new launch is not very fair to compare because as long as the place got more new launch, then the price trend definitely it will go up very fast. So I omit all the new launch, giving us only the resale price trend comparison over the past five years for District 2, 7 and 9. Okay, looking at District 2, over the past five years, it has been increased for 5%. Okay, 1% per year is not even enough to cover your mortgage interest, right? Whereas for District 9, it performed better with 15% growth and District 7 actually performed very well. For the past 5 years, it grew 36%, which is much higher than the other two districts. So all this will only tell one thing. District 7 has the very high demand. And the demand is still growing because the price is still growing. So next, we are going to compare the rental trend for the same area, District 2, 7 and 9, over the past 5 years. Okay, for District 2 and 9, due to the COVID situation, it is declining 4% and 8% respectively. However, for District 7, it is still growing for 1%. They only tell one thing, District 7 is recession proof. Even last year was really attacked by this COVID. It is still sustainable. So I believe if you are looking for something in CBD, if you have a budget of more than 1 million, you may want to look into District 7. Okay, the next topic I want to touch on, is it oversupply in the District 7? Okay, now we're moving into the micro perspective. And this is very important, the supply nearby Midtown Modern. We want to see if the number of units in the pipeline coming in can be supported by the demand or not. For Midtown Modern, we have more than 500 units. The M, which was launched last year, they have more than 500 units also, 80% already so. And Midtown Bay, which is under the Guaco Midtown development as well, it has 219 units only. And 33% has been sold. For South Beach, they have only 190 units. 82% already so, And that makes up a total of not more than 1,500 units in the pipeline supply in District 7. Okay, now I want to show you 
just for your comparison purpose so that you understand whether this 1500 units is a lot or not and now i want to show you another district that has even more new launch supply in the past five years which is district 3 you can count here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 projects in the past few years for your information district 3 is around queenstown red hill and tiong baru mrt so the total number of units in these nine projects is more than 5,800 units. So with a lot of supply, right, you want to see whether the performance is still doing well or not, especially for the resale. Because resale is the one that best illustrates whether the market demand can really absorb the supply or not. And in the past five years, the resale market in District 3 really surprised me it grow 12 percent in the past five years this is only resale it doesn't include the new sales if include new sell i believe has been increased even higher so in summary i want to tell you that the most important is whether the demand can really absorb the supply or not so that you will know whether this is a good area to invest or not okay for me town bay it was launched in 2019 as of early March, it was around 33%, so left with only 147 units. Whereas for the M, launched in last year, just one year anniversary, and they have around 80%, so there is only slightly more than 100 units left. So what is the conclusion regarding the supply? Meaning that the supply is low in District 7 and the demand is high, right? So the most important next topic will be only the price because a lot of people thinking that good, uh, good, uh, everything very good but the price may be also very good uh, then whether you can afford to buy or not. Of course, uh, District 7 won't be cheap even for the resale. Eh, I made a project comparison, I include the resale and the new launch. For our comparison, among the 5 projects which include Concourse Skyline, Dual Residences, Midtown Bay, DM, and also Midtown Modern. All the numbers in with the bracket, right? It refers to the year of the leasehold start. In District 7, I couldn't find any freehold project. Right? You got to buy leasehold, right? So this will be an advantage huh? because Midtown Modern will be the newest condo in Bugis area. So for Concourse Skyline, starting from 2008, right now 2021, it's already 13 years gone. However, you're looking at the price, uh, for the one better, everything is beyond 1 million. The M transacted the lowest, uh, a few units below 1 million during the launch last year. For now, their one bedroom is selling at 1.3 to 1.4 million range. And I think only one unit left for their one bedroom. And the second lowest, it will be Midtown Modern or Dual Residences. And the price for the one bedroom at Midtown Modern is starting from 1.1x million. This is the guide price given by the developer. And of course, this is the pricing for the smaller size for the one bedroom, which is the 409 square feet. And I want to show you something interesting here is that the pricing for the two bedroom here is very attractive. For the two bed one bath 592 square feet from 1.4 x million let's say you draw a line over here 1.4 million you cannot even buy a resale condo in bookies eh. even for the concourse skyline the minimum entry price for the two bedroom is already more than 2 million whereas for dual residence two bedroom is about 1.7 million onwards for your information, these are the past 36 month record I taken from the Ash Pro. And for the three bedroom, the difference is even more obvious. Looking at the three bedroom, I draw a line across. The three bedroom price uh, that you can buy in Midtown Modern, you can't even find anything in dual residence and concourse. With that kind of price, uh, you can only buy two bedroom in dual residence and two bedroom in concourse skyline. That said, you can buy a 3 bedroom at 2 bedroom price. Eh. 4 bedroom is even better. You're looking at it, Midtown Bay and DM doesn't have 
any supply for the four bedroom. You can only find it in dual residence and concourse skyline. Both of the project, the pricing is much higher. I know what you think. Concourse skyline and dual residence, they are resale condo with a very big unit size. So definitely their quantum is higher, right? And don't forget, Concourse Skyline has been launched before the TDSR is implemented. So talking about last time, you can build bigger units, bigger quantum, people still able to absorb because of the long quantum is still okay. But for now, with the limited long quantum that we can get, so if they build bigger, but with the land cost, the material cost and manpower cost increase, there is no other choice than build it with the smaller size within affordable range. So, this is the advantage for the new launch. With the three bedroom, maybe even smaller than the two bedroom resale. But three bedroom, the functionality is there. The smaller three bedroom, it is still always having three bedroom. But the two bedroom, it depends the unit layout, whether it is possible to convert into three bedroom or not. The smallest three bedroom type C1, 904 square feet. The price is starting from 2.2x million. Four bedroom starting from 3.6x million. And the four bedroom premium starting from 4.5x million. Now, I want to show you something very interesting here. There is another integrated development in Bidadari Estate, which is just next to the Woodley MRT. There is no one bedroom in this project. The smallest unit is the two bedroom and the price transacted for their two bedroom uh, the record has been hit 1.57 million so what you can buy for the 1.57 million in midtown modern it is also the two bedroom for the three bedroom the highest record transacted in woodley residence is already 2.6 million so what can you buy with the 2.6 million in Midtown Modern is also three bedroom. Something I want to mention for the resale nearby this Midtown Modern. If you go into Property Guru today and you only pick the three bedroom resale in dual residence, I can only find eight result. There is not more than eight units of the three bedroom resale in dual residence in today's market and some of them are even duplicated so this only tell one thing the three bedroom supply near to Boogie's MRT is a shortage and looking back in this chart for the three bedroom in the M total you have 17 units and it was fully sold in my opinion even the three bedroom may be a good choice if you are looking for own stay purpose Come to my score and review for Midtown Modern. Okay, first the location, I give it 9. For facilities, I give 8 because this is still considered as the full facilities with the tennis court and 50 meter lap pool. Amenities, I give it 10. Definitely this will be one of the best location for live, walk and play. For price, I give it 6 because this is not really affordable for anyone. You must have at least 1.1 over million budget. Okay, for exit strategy, this will be include for the future development and whether in the future, this project can be resell at a higher price or not. I give it a seven. And overall, it is 80%. You may leave a comment below to tell me your score for this project. And this project is actually suitable for those who like lifestyle living and those who are working in CBD and those who are buying this project for a long term, at least a 5 to 10 years. And this is a project that not so suitable for those who dislike hustle and bustle of the city life. If you're someone looking for ultra high rental you, this may not be the best project for you. So that's all about my Midtown Modern score and review. And next episode, I'm going to touch on the floor plan analysis and comparison. I will include the comparison between Midtown Modern, the M and Midtown Bay as well. So stay tuned. Appreciate your thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more video like this. See you again in my next video.